Joining me now is my favorite NASCAR driver on earth. He's a man that I've had a couple cocktails with. I've met his beautiful wife. He has an incredible family. He's successful. He's just a guy that you would want to be friends with who happens to be a NASCAR driver. He fights. He talks shit. He does everything, and I absolutely love it. This weekend on NBC at 2.30, he'll be in Phoenix, ready to take on the rest of the NASCAR field as he rubbing and racing and juking and jiving and cutting and hunting and go low, out high, all that racing bullshit, ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Busch. <laughs> Yay, what's up? How's it going, Pat? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm good, man. It's been uh, it's been a long time. What you been doing? Well, I've just been living. I've seen you've been creating a whole family. You and your lady have been procreating. I like that. you got a beautiful baby. Yeah, we got a uh, two and a half year old now, man. Brett, and he's uh, he's growing like a weed, and he's uh, he's wide open. He loves this race car thing too. So just as much as I do, he's uh, he might be a future star. Who knows? Is he like a little Ricky Bobby right now, stealing the car, fucking flying around? Yeah. So I guess I'm the Ricky Bobby, right? So he's either um, Walker or Texas Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, technically, because Ricky Bobby's father told him if you're in first or last, so that would be you talking. But I get it. I do you enjoy that movie? Tell the guys. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a good movie. It's good anytime. Of course, it's uh you're flipping through channels, whatever it's on. You're always like, oh yeah, okay, I'll watch it. You know, so. Kyle, where are you from? Originally, I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Did you know you're gonna be a racer forever? Or? Um, I don't know, man. I'd say uh, when back in the beginning, back in my early days, um, my dad was racing, my brother was racing, and I was always kind of working on the car. So getting my hands dirty, being in the garage, and doing all that sort of stuff. I thought that, uh, you know what, this this gig's okay, but it seems like they're having a heck of a lot more fun because they get to race these things. So uh, I wanted to get out there and give it my shot, and I was 13 when I first started, but uh, I probably had that itch that I wanted to go race since I was about 10. So uh, it seems as though I, I kind of picked out the right uh, the right avenue to go down. Is being a professional race car driver everything you thought it was going to be whenever you were 13, whenever you are thinking about getting into it? Uh, not exactly, no. I would say that uh, I would say that the, the being on the racetrack, the winning races, and – Going to victory lane, all that stuff is just as, as you would want it to be. But uh, the rest of the stuff behind the scenes, the sponsor things and, um, you know, working like this, interviews, whatever, you know, although it's with your bro, it's always kind of just weird. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's a lot more fun to just go out there and, and kick everybody's butt on the racetrack. Speaking of, you have one of the most epic fights in recent history. And you're probably not allowed to talk about it, which is great. So I'm going to bring it up for sure, because I thought it was the <laughs> highlight of the NASCAR year. Whenever it, it showed like real competitiveness, it like sh showed real juice. And if you want to, peanut M&Ms are my favorite, by the way. So I, I love everything you're doing. Yeah, get your tits in there. Yeah, that's good. You uh, like that? Man. Yeah. So what, is there any communication between you and the other drivers while you're on the track? Or are you only talking to your pit crew? Uh, you're only talking to your crew. So you can't like talk to the other driver who just did something morally unacceptable on the track there. You can only handle it afterwards. That's right. No, you can't say anything to him. I mean, you could go through your spotter, you could go through your crew chief if you wanted to, but really in that in that time frame, it pretty much becomes like Chinese telegraph and the, the message doesn't quite get relayed the same as you said it. Hey, I want you to tell blah, 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 to stop fucking with me. And then they won't relay it in the same intensity as you, so it doesn't make sense. Is that right? Yeah, they're pretty much like, uh, hey, he didn't think that was very nice, so don't do it again. <laughs> what is something that can happen on the racetrack that would cause you to want to fight somebody? Uh, getting crashed out or wrecked or something deliberately when you feel as though it was definitely deliberate. That's, uh, that's, that's when fact of the matter comes out and you're pretty pissed off. See for you guys, you're going so fast and there's only inches away from each other. So if somebody that's like a near death experience and they're actually trying to crash into you, I would want to fight them too. Right. See, that's 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 the name of the game. That's where it all boiled down to. That's what it came from. So you're racing at 180 miles an hour and we we're only racing for a third place finish in this instance that we're talking about. But still, man, it's like, hey, you know, you just crashed me out for no reason coming to the checker flag. Like I raced you. I bumped into you, whatever. I passed you. I was going to, you know, race you to the finish line. I bumped him. Rubbin' son is racing. Yeah, in case it is. It's that movie. Yeah, it is. Rubbin's and, racing. You can't. And so it. I got you wiped out. And so I was pissed about it. Yeah, you should have been. And I really like what you did. There was no bullshit, no walking around, straight into the biggest dog in the thing, fist thrown. I loved everything about it. <laughs> I loved it. it. It turned out to be uh, one of those highlight moments of the year that still you continue to talk about. Yeah, I'm not supposed to. Um, <laughs> your actual wording was, don't bring up the fight. You, that's on me. Hundred. I just ain't edible, Kyle. There's nothing I can do. Well, I think the first time we did, we, uh, we, 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 
talk to each other about having me on the show. It was like right after that. You were like, you need to come on the show. And I was like, oh, let's give it a couple of weeks. And you still haven't forgot. So um, I'm glad that couple of weeks has uh, has still remembered in your brain. It was such a big deal. I was so excited because na- I'm so I didn't know anything about NASCAR. I never knew anything. You've been my backup, but you have been there. Yeah, I, that's what I live for. Like those moments because I'm not supposed to win any fight. But I feel like in a pit stop in a NASCAR, I might win one in there. You know, I okay. might I might get in football. I've been in like three fights and it's not good. Like I'm not supposed to be in those fights. I only show up for like film purposes. So I look good. And then, and then I get thrown by some guy much bigger than me and it's over. But like for this, this would have been a lot of fun. I didn't think your boys had your back enough though. In that fight. Did you talk to your friends about that? They, uh, they didn't know what I was going to do. Like there was no discussion. You can't talk about it. You can't premeditate it before it's going to happen. You just got to go over there and go do it. And look, I was like, you know what, what happens happens. You just got to get in there. No, no ifs, ands, or buts, no talking about it. Just throw. Yeah. I'm on your side here. Uh, you've been doing really, it seems as if you win all the time. Like I said, I never really get a chance to keep up with NASCAR as much as, because it's enjoyable as hell to watch. From the humans that are at the races, to what's going on in the infield of races, to the talent level, not only in on the racetrack, but the pit crews. It's a, it's a full magical event. I don't get to keep up. But it seems as if you always fucking win. I, I'm being serious when I say that. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say always. Always is... Um is is a word used loosely about all the time and i certainly wish i was winning all the time but you're right we've had a lot of a lot of good races this year and we finished uh let's see we've won three of the eight playoff races thus far um you know so it's been really really good for us three of the eight and uh in the season we've won six times um so it's been a really good year for us in 2017 and we've got two races left to go we got phoenix coming up this weekend like you said on nbc at 2 30 eastern and then we've got uh, the final race at Homestead, which is coming up next week. So we're looking forward to that one, too. That's fucking... Are you dead tired after your races, or do you celebrate? Uh, sometimes you are you are dead tired. You know, when it comes down to the final race at Homestead, though, which is uh, the same time, 2.30 Eastern on NBC, it's going to be... Wow. Uh, it's going to be all about partying afterwards when you win the championship. When the championship is won, man, the party goes all night long. It don't stop. What are you? So you're going to be in Miami. Your lady's going to be there, who is also a great time. I've, I've yep. got a chance to celebrate life with both of you. What is going to? Do you have like uh, like UFC fighters? They have post fight parties already planned. You don't want to do that, obviously, because you don't want to be calling your shot. But let's say you win in Miami. What is the first move? For the well, the, the first move after the after the race is over, you better win the race, by the way, in order to win this championship. But the first move is just you're celebrating in victory lane. You got this big old stage that comes up oh. and you're celebrating with your team and all oh. your sponsors. I mean, the stage is full of like 50 team people. And then, um, you know, you've got the, the sports um, CEO, Brian France, comes out, gives you the trophy presentation and all this sort of stuff. So you go through that whole song and dance and photos. The photos last for like three hours. Like so by wedding the time- photos, yeah. Exactly. It is. It's like wedding photos. Yeah. So you do all that stuff. And then when you're all said and done with that, then it's time to get down to the beer and whatever else at, uh, at the motor home. We're, in, we're staying in the infield there at the racetrack and there's a big lake there. And last year or two years ago when I won the championship, uh, we were out with our crew guys. It was, I don't know, 3.30 in the morning, something like that. We were still still going at it and partying. We had them stripped down in their underwear and they went for a swim in the lake all the way down and around the buoy that was in the middle of the lake and come back and Later on, we told him that the lake was full of snakes and everything else, so it was a pretty good time. <laughs> Jesus. Allegedly swimming, I assume. Allegedly swimming, yes. One of those incidences. We <laughs> uh, know about that, Pat. Just stop. All right, enough. We need to, it's, we've moved on about that one, too. Your little fight. Hold on a second. Wait. Um, I remember something about uh, reading in the news. I think you were playing football or something. I, or yeah. do, you, do you kick a foosball? Is uh, that what you do? I retired from all that, Kyle. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so allegedly there was, uh, there was this swimming incident, I remember. That wasn't after one of the nights we hung out, was no, it? No. No, we had – but do you remember Steak and Shake at, like, 3.30, 4 a.m. in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yes, yes, I do. I remember, I remember that one vividly. That was, uh, that was a pretty good time. The, the waitress had no clue what was happening to her at that moment. Me, I'm very into. We just got done with a Super Bowl party. I think it was me, him, his lady, uh, which I cannot say enough good things about. I want that to be known. She was so nice because I was very intoxicated, and I'm a lot when I'm intoxicated. And Kyle, when he's a little intoxicated, he's a good time too. KY here gets after it. And Hank and Kendra were there, and we roll into the middle of the hood in Indianapolis with this fucking 10-seat limo, limousine riding right into a steak and shake at like 3.30, and the waitress was like, 
I do not want anything to do with any of this. She was yeah, not no, excited. She was, she was quite spun out as soon as, and there was extras with us. It wasn't just that group. There was more. So we had about, what, nine, ten of us, and uh, and they were really understaffed for that moment in the morning and, and being on Super Bowl evening. By the way, you just said she was really spun out. Do you guys use, like, race terms in life? Like, if somebody's, like, she was spun out. That's like a racing term. You just dropped a racing term on me right Yeah, now. totally, like shake and bake. Hey, now you see me. Now, now you, you don't. Know. That's right. <laughs> What is your racing style, Kyle? Aggressive. Take no shit. Is that how many, like, who was the driver you looked up to or watched the film of? Uh, I'd say that my favorite driver growing up was uh, was Jeff Gordon. That's who I looked up to the most. Um, he was kind of the new kid coming on the scene when I first started watching racing. I was only like seven, eight years old at that time, I think. So, um, you know, watching him and uh, being a part of what, what his legacy was, was always pretty cool, you know, being a a fan of his and then getting to the, the the cup series and being able to race against him was also pretty neat. And then in his final season, that was my first championship. So it's kind of unique that uh, I sucked that long in the sprint in the, in the cup series before I could win a championship that it took Jeff Gordon to retire to get one. <laughs> well, there's a line in a rap song that said, when your idols become your rivals, blah, blah, blah. I yeah, this- we had, we've had those moments. Yep. No question. Yeah. I, that's like Shane Leckler. Who's like my homie now. Like he was the guy I looked up to when I first started punting and then we started battling and now, now we can't wait to get drunk with each other. It's a win, win, win. All right, yeah. Kyle. Uh, good luck with everything, man. Stay safe. The family's beautiful. You're racing. Fantastic. Peanut M&Ms are so good. Uh, just keep dominating life, brother. I appreciate it, man. It's been uh, awesome to be on your show. You guys, you guys do a great job. It's always fun to see your podcast and whatnot. So um, I appreciate that and looking forward to the finish of the season. If you can get your butt to Homestead, man, let's go. Let's yeah. party it up. Yeah, all bro. I am definitely swimming drunk with those nude dudes with the snakes and the gators. <laughs> if you win, I'm coming down. Snakes weren't just in the water, buddy. Oh, hi. <laughs> are you talking about dicks right there? Or are you talking Never about action? Jesus, Kyle, Kyle Bush, ladies and gentlemen.